I felt the need to do this video prior to doing the video about Austria 2021, the two races there that were held there before Silverstone 2021. Um, and it's to give you context um, and context of how things are dealt with by the FIA, FIA in terms of uh, driving standards. Now, during the 2021 season, uh, I believe Max Verstappen should have been banned for at least one race, at least one race. But I'll come to that and, and we'll give you a, a full breakdown to back those statements up. Um, but I, you can do a Google search yourself. Um, I did a Google search about driver penalty points and it says how many penalty points have all 20 F1 one drivers got. And this is dated the 12th of July, 2021. So if we scroll down here, um, we've got Lando Norris on eight points. Um, and then coming down from Lando Norris, it gives you the video of what Lando's involved in there. Sergio Perez, eight points. George Russell, six points. Um, Seb Vettel, six points. Raikkonen, six. Giovinazzi, five. Nicholas Latifi, six. Nikita Mazepin, five. Yuki Tsunoda, four. Lance Stroll, four. Charles Leclerc, two. Lewis Hamilton, two. Valtteri Bottas, two. Ocon, one. Ricardo, one. Sainz, one. Gasly, one. And Max Verstappen, Fernando Alonso and Mick Schumacher with clean licences on zero points. And it goes on to say, cleanliness, they say, is close to godliness. And Max Verstappen, Fernando Alonso and Mick Schumacher have all got sparkling super licences having all avoided sanction in the past 12 months. Alonso and Schumacher helped by the fact they weren't racing in F1 for the majority of those. So, um, godliness from Max Verstappen. And if we look for confirmation on other tabs, uh, you can check on Autosport. But this is an interesting table here. Um, at that point in time that the article was written, Verstappen had no points on his license. This one is on uh, F1 Stats blog, uh, F1 Penalty Points, and this was last updated on the 31st of October 2022. And from the top, at that point in time, the dirtiest driver uh, with the most points in a period from 2014 through to 2020 was Sebastian Vettel with 32 points accumulated in that period. Uh, this column here, second from the right. Next dirtiest driver in that list, Max Verstappen. Uh, next dirtiest driver, Sergio Perez. Next dirtiest driver, Daniel Kvyat. So the top four, all Red Bull or have a history of driving for Red Bull. Hmm. Are we uh, are we sensing a pattern here? And then we come down. Who else has driven for Red Bull in the past? Well, Pierre Gasly is currently on 10 points. Down there on 16, but currently got 10 points. Alex Albon, 15 points. Uh, current points is 7. I don't, know, I don't know how they teach them to drive in that uh, Red Bull um, school academy as to what constitutes acceptable driving. Over that same period, Lewis Hamilton, 17 points. OK, now if we go back to the article by uh, F1 themselves and we look at Lewis Hamilton um, and look at the fact that he's got two points with Lewis Hamilton four four penalty points for his. Well, with Lewis Hamilton's four penalty points for his various 2020 Austrian Grand Prix infringements, uh, failing to slow under yellows in quality. And then forcing Alex Albon off track in the race, having expired on July the 5th. Hamilton now sits on two points. These two were earned thanks to him coming to the pit lane when it was closed at Monza last year, paving the way for Pierre Gasly's cockle-warming win. Thanks for that. So, 
Forcing another car off the track. Let's have a look at what forcing another car off the track looks like and you know then the fact that you get points out of it so we're going to look at that so what i've done i've recorded from f1 tv from the 2020 austrian grand prix which was the first race of that season covid hit season um and i've playing this back at a quarter speed you can go onto the settings on youtube and play youtube at a a double speed setting if you like and that will speed this up a little bit um, I might actually if I've, I might actually play this at um, half speed so that then you can go to YouTube at double speed and it will be, give you uh, real time um, pictures of it not real time pictures but full speed pictures that's what I mean um, but we're going to go through it at slow speed and I'll show you what happened so I'll let you see it first up uh, as to what is actually happening so let's have a look so it'll, uh, here you go. So you've got Hamilton and Albon coming around turn, I think it's turn four, Austria. There's a collision there and it sends Albon spinning off. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through that and we're going to show you the different perspective of that. So this is it again. Now there's a couple of things going on here. So Albon is looking to challenge Hamilton. We can look at the relative braking zones. So that's, sorry, I need to pause there. Just drag that back a second as they go by the marker board. So this over on the right hand side, under the uh, Pirelli sign is 100 metres to the corner. OK, so if I um, if you look where these two cars are now challenging each other and we're coming up to the 50, 50 marker board. So keep your eye on where them cars are relative to each other there. OK, at that 50 metre marker board. It's fair to say that Albon's nose is about halfway along the outside of Hamilton's car at that point in time. Now, as you watch this forward, the two cars behind it, it's um, Sergio Perez and Lando Norris in the McLaren. So just before we, you can keep your eye on Albon and Hamilton, but also check these two cars out that are behind. So at that point in time, and I was a fraction slow on pressing pause, Norris is actually further ahead relative to Perez than Albon was to Hamilton. OK, now watch what happens with both sets of cars. So let's have a look. Oops, what's he doing that for? Okay, Perez stays tight on the curb, but look at the gap between these two cars here. Okay, look at the gap. Look how wide Lando Norris stays to avoid the other car that he knows is on, on his inside. Okay, now who's right, who's wrong? I'm not going to go into the intricacies of who's right, who's wrong, but what... When you are racing another car, you both have to give each other space. OK, you both have to understand that there is another vehicle that you are competing with on track and you both have to make allowances for the other vehicle. Now, you'll see from different perspectives, although it, it, you'll also see why it's not easy to necessarily do that. So. impact there you can see that at this stage when the impact is there um, Albon his front wheels are on the track his back wheel is probably the rear left back wheel is probably on the edge of the track line again difficult to get 
accurate perspective, but that's about the situation. OK, um, but look at Norris and Perez come around the same bend. And what happens? They change angle, but you could see that Norris was yielding. OK, so that will play through one more time. So I, gave, I did this three times. So here we go again. Albon on Hamilton. And you've also got behind him Norris on Perez. Fifty meter board. That's where those two cars are relative to one another. Okay. Fifty meter board. That's where those two cars are relative to each other. As I say, Norris is is further ahead, well, further, further ahead, he, he is um, further alongside Perez than Albon was relative to Hamilton. You look at these two cars, how far they are from each other at that stage. Okay, now Hamilton takes a wider line in, but now he comes right through to almost cl clip the uh, white line on the inside there. You look at now the two cars behind as well how far them two are apart hamilton is now front wheel touching the curb so he's just taken a later apex which is absolutely no problem but you look at this um uh, perez takes an earlier apex but norris keeps well wide of him taking the later apex should mean you come out of that corner flatter, allowing room for the car on the outside as well. Okay. So that's what's happened. And you will see just before it, it changes shot that uh, Norris will yield. This collision happens and it sends. Oh, again, you look at this point in time now. You look where Hamilton's front wheel is and you look at um Albon's rear wheel and you look at where his front wheels his front wheels are on the track okay so Albon is fully on the track at this moment in time bang and now there's a collision and it changes angle and if I can just drag that back a fraction and try and pause it look at the Again, we've just got the change of shot after the impact. Look at the room to Hamilton's right. Sorry, it would be his left as he's driving forward, obviously. Now, that's not a full car width at that stage. Um, but when we see a different angle, you'll see the point of impact. Everything moves so quickly in Formula One that the amount of track room changes in the in the split second absolute split second and any movement of the steering wheel will result in that car at its position on track being entirely different anyway we'll go do it from the uh, driver camera perspective now because i've now taken the car camera footage from lewis's car cam and we'll go through from that when it gets to so here we go lewis hamilton in car camera He's been looking at his rear view mirror, so he knows that Albon is there. He's positioning his car to defend. He's on what would be the racing line. Car coming round the outside. Look at Lewis Hamilton's hands. So, if I pause it here. Look at Lewis Hamilton's hands. And this kind of, you can see the logo on his glove. You can see the central section of his halo. There's a reference. Okay. Look at the back rear tyre of Albon. That has encroached into the car space of Lewis Hamilton. Now, there's car width here. There is room on the outside. Obviously, because of the way that the corner, kind of you come around the corner on this line, that room is is narrowing down but at this stage Alex Albon's car has encroached into Lewis's 
car space and it's going to his back wheel is going to hit Lewis Hamilton's front wheel like this now we'll show show you this a few times but look at Hamilton's hands now look at Lewis Hamilton's hands impact which impacts Lewis Hamilton's front wheels okay which then impacts Lewis Hamilton have to input his steering now at that point in time a split second behind after the impact it moves Lewis Hamilton's car to the left because he's had to it's jolted his steering and now he's having to counter steer back right again so it's only now that he's that impact has jolted him his steering round to the left and then he's had to put right lock on again to correct his car but that fraction of a movement has made his car go over to the left making the whole situation look a lot worse than it actually was so we'll go through that again so up to the corner again Hamilton will be checking his mirrors you can see him looking in his mirrors okay marker boards here comes the 50 okay now into view comes Albon now Hamilton's hands look at his hands look at his hands look him look at him stay there look at that marker on his back of his hands bang look what it does to his steering wheel the correction and then he takes his hand off his steering wheel going what the well we all know what he's saying there okay so I'll do this again and this is it's reacting like that at quarter speed you speed this up it just shows the skill that these guys have so again Lewis Hamilton 50 board no sign of the attacking car then it's late Lewis Hamilton's gloves going round that corner round that corner but that car converge across him now now there's a wider line there's a wider loop that you can be taking there you've got a car on your inside that you know its natural momentum is going to sweep it wide of that corner okay and it's both drivers responsibility to give one another space and you know he's there and you're cutting a line that you know you're going to converge on look at Lewis Hamilton's hand they do not change they don't steer into Albon I wish I could show you Albon's because Albon's car camera is not available on this on this race that there's the impact at that point in time is there room for Albon's car on that track now that space from Lewis Hamilton's front left tire to the edge of the track is there a car width there I would suggest there's close to being there is the curb and there also is the green area I'm not suggesting that you should have to use that but when you are wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing you see that often that is what they do now ideally yes you would want to leave them at least a width of track room okay I cannot tell from this angle whether we've got that we've got an aerial shot or if there was another another shot which give us a categoric clear answer then that would be helpful but there's certainly Lewis has not ran him out of room he's on track and a collision occurs on the track Lewis hasn't ran him out of room and you can see then what happens to Lewis's steering which then you go from this position and the distance is Lewis Hamilton's approximately a car width from the edge of the track and you then see what happens to his hands and that's where he is relative to the edge of the track within a fraction of a second because of that impact on his front wheels that's what happens now look at it when I tr do try to uh, cut to Alex Albon's car camera so again you know, I'll do that and all that's going to happen you'll see it is that when you go to the driver cam version for Alex Albon's car 
it will not show you what that incident looked like from Alex Albon's perspective. That's all we get. So I can't show it you from that, otherwise I would. All right. So the only other thing that I can do is show it you from Lando Norris's perspective. So I went on to Lando Norris's car cam, which we're going to look at now. So Lando is now looking at the back of Sergio Perez's car and getting to that same point in time where the two cars ahead now are Albon and Hamilton. Okay. And they're going around there. And it's about there where the impact is. Now, is that one car running the other car off the track? Did Lewis Hamilton steer into Albon? Or did Lewis Hamilton fix his hands in a position for his car to go around the corner? And that correction after the impact caused Hamilton's car to drift more in this area. Look at what Perez's car is doing relative to um, Norris's. The line that Perez's car is on, which is normal. And look at the position of Norris's car having stayed wide. Look at where Norris has positioned his car. So Norris's car, his front tyre is on, the, on this curb already. And like the middle of his cars on the on the middle of the uh, track limits line, you know this is this line that I'm running my cursor up and down. That is the edge of the track, and this is the line that Norris is on. Because when you're wheel to wheel racing, you are giving one another space. And we'll just go through that again. Again, sorry I can't show you what it looks like from Alex Albon's perspective, but the distance between the two cars for, for Albon, you look at how close Albon is to Hamilton there. Still close, okay. There is the impact. The impact is at a point where certainly his rear wheel, rear left is on track. I would suggest his front left was still on track. Okay. And he's selected a line that brings him within Lewis Hamilton's car. You know, brought his back wheel within Lewis Hamilton's, in between his front and back wheels. With the knowledge that there is a car there on your inside and you're not, you're not giving it any room yourself. Whereas you look at what Norris does relative to Perez and, and what room Norris gives to his fellow competitor. Recognises it's there. Realises the track that it's going to be on. And look at where Norris positions his car. So... What can we say about this? The reality is, depending on who you support, will depend on who you think is right and who you think is wrong. Um, that is the nature of um, people's opinions on that. That's why they do have judgment calls. I think it's a borderline decision in terms of, did can you categorically say, Lewis Hamilton ran him out of road or didn't give him enough space. I don't think you can categorically say that. Whether there was enough space for Albon to stay wide and still make it around that corner, I would say that that was highly, highly likely. And Albon's the one that didn't ensure there was enough space between the cars. And Lewis Hamilton didn't do anything that was abnormal. Okay, Others will take the... Um, contrary view. The point is, this isn't about arguing over the mechanics of this specific situation. That's that's what happened. That's what the stewards deemed to be Lewis Hamilton's fault. Um, and let's try and find that now, if we can. 
So this is the um, FIA document from the 2020 Austrian Grand Prix. Driver number 44, Lewis Hamilton, uh, car 44 uh, and car 23 collided in turn 4. Involved in an incident defined by Article 38.1 of the FIA Formula 1 Sporting Regulations. Decision, a 5 second time penalty. Two penalty points imposed, a total of seven in the 12 month period. The stewards review the video evidence showing that cars 23 and 44 were side by side approaching the apex of turn four. They negotiated the turn side by side, but car 23 had a better exit and was in the process of passing car 44. Car 44 was drafting to the outside at the exit of turn four and consequently making contact with the rear right wheel of car 23 causing car 23 to spin. The stewards determine that the driver of car 44 is predominantly to blame for the collision. Competitors are reminded that they have the right to appeal certain decisions of the stewards in accordance with article 15 of the FIA Sporting Code. Okay, and our stewards, well, Felix Holter, one of our Abu Dhabi stewards, is one of those stewards. Now, Issues. Did Lewis Hamilton run the other car off the track? At the point in time those cars collided, could Alex Albon have been on the track? Now, I like the notion of him being left a full car with he, whether he was or not. That's debatable. I don't know. Can't, can't tell for sure from those angles. What is deemed acceptable in terms of track limits are as long as your tyre is in contact with the line, okay, in terms of like, you can be a centimetre to the right of that line on that particular corner. As part of your tyres are touching that track, a centimetre to the right of that white line, you're deemed to be on track. You've not exceeded track limits. Does that layout allow you for that? You've got the width of the kerb, you've got that green area, which you will see rubber tyre marks on. Drivers take that wider line around there. Lando Norris straddled that white line to ensure he had space. Okay, that is motor racing, that is what they do. You compare that incident which Lewis Hamilton got blamed for when there was, and let's be clear, there was significant space to the left of Lewis Hamilton for the other car to be in Okay, there was still significant space for the other car to be and there was a collision and Lewis Hamilton got blamed for the, the collision. He got a five second time penalty and he got two penalty points on his license. You've seen what they have determined. You've seen the actual context of that situation. You've seen how much there was to the left of Lewis Hamilton. You can see what's to the left hand side of him. And that's just the moment after the collision because Hamilton's car has just moved just as I stop this. That is the amount of trap room to the left of Lewis Hamilton. At that point, he gets blamed for it. So now that you've seen that, when you watch my other videos that I'm going to go through both about Austria uh, for 2021, and then we'll do this with the incidents involving Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen in the 2021 season. The ones where Karun Chandok gives it the old, oh, and Max carries so much extra speed and it's understeer, understeer, understeer. And the fact that one guy runs the other guy off the track. And Lewis Hamilton avoids the collisions by driving off the track to avoid a collision, avoid a crash, and we'll see what penalties are handed out. We'll see what the driving standards are, who's allowed to get away with driving like that without penalty. Okay, so hopefully that has provided you with a bit of context so that when I do the other breakdowns, you can always refer back to this so to, because it's important. You know, we, we need to understand the 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 nature of the decision making and why it always seems to favour 
one driver and one team. Anyway, that will do for this one. Thank you for your time.